Hi, I'm Eric in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I received this uh, Falcon Sail. Uh, it's a Father's Day gift, and I'm going to install it on a Wilderness Systems Tsunami 135. Uh, this uh, I call my oyster catcher. I use it in Core Sound out near Cape Lookout. Uh, I chase down oysters with this thing, so it gets kind of scratched up at the bottom. Irrespective, it's uh, ready for a sail. I have a West White Potter. Gets my sailing uh, thrills, but this has been easier and more frequently off in the water than trailering the sailboat out there. So I am missing some sailing and am going to install a Falcon sail on a Tsunami 135. It's a nice day, July 5th, 2014. We don't often get low humidity days in this part of the country, so I'm doing it outside here in my backyard. The whole package came in the box within a week of ordering. Thank you, Sherry, my wife, for ordering that. And the biggest challenge in getting going is deciding exactly where to place the sail. So I am going to go to the camera and point out some of the things that I debated and where I ended up placing, deciding where I would place the mast. So the mast mount here. So for the Tsunami 135, the first point uh, to note is where the forestay is attached to the bow of the boat. The, the Tsunami has a carrying strap here and at where that strap is attached is a cleat, I'm sorry, a, a sort of an eye pad up here that allows you to put the pulley right up front without drilling additional holes. It uh, slides in underneath the carrying strap so there might be a little rub on there but the carrying strap isn't used too much and I've got this temporarily tied on here later on I can cinch it down and have the forestay running from this block right here. The two positions then measuring 18 inches out on the boat would put you on the kayak rather will put you at just in front of this dimple where one would maybe put a compass or simply for the marketing for the wilderness systems decal but nonetheless that would be 18 inches there just in front of that the hatch is back here so it could be placed 24 inches another six inches out right at this point both of those points would seem to be acceptable mounting points for the mast the under support for the mast support inside the hole would be accessible from the hatch cover here and that could be placed here or here. One advantage of being placed out here uh, for the under support would be it would give you more clear stowage area from the hatch forward. But to me one of the bigger considerations would be how the boom and mast lay out on the body of the kayak. So if we look back here the boom would extend to here in the forward position at 18 inches and would just intrude into the cockpit area. That would be fine. It's in front of my knees and uh, would give a lot of clearance as far as I can tell from the mast and from the boom when paddling. When stowed the kayak, the sail, the mast and boom will need to lay alongside the cockpit. This is because the, the mast is too tall and would go to the seat. Basically, that would not work. So that will lay there. Unfortunately, it kind of rises right where I'm paddling. So the height of this with the mast might interfere a little bit with paddling but my stroke is further out so maybe that'll be okay. 
Um, so if I were, for example, to move the, ma the, the mast mount to the 24 inch position, and then we'd have the boom riding on the ring here. So at this point, we would have the support strut in the hole right beyond the mast in, uh, hatch entrance. The boom would be mounted here. And then this would extend and thus the boom would intrude into the cockpit and would cross in front of my body above my knees would probably be more of an issue when paddling. It would be stowed, rise a little bit here, and then the back of the mast would extend just to my back where I'm sitting in the cockpit. So all said and done with this boom intrusion here, even though that may be better with this top of the mast extending beyond where my arm would be when paddling, I'm going to go with the 18 inch placement rather than the 24 inch placement and put the mast mounting pad right up here in that position with the forestay coming up 18 inch distance from the mast and I think we're good. So now it's a matter of putting the template down and drilling holes and installing this thing. So I have measured the template to place it 18 inches on center from the forward or the bow block retaining screw that's right up there 18 inches down to the center there's a bit of a ridge line a little bit of a so it's not exactly flat uh, running down the middle of the kayak so the block uh, the retaining block will be or the mast mount will be sitting on that ridge got to screw it down tight hopefully it'll be fairly flush but measured that it's about eight inches up from those screws, eight and a quarter. Um, and we're all set to start drilling on the template. The holes have been drilled, so we're on our way. Templates removed. Now we're going to install the mast mounting bracket here. And along with that will be the support strut that will go underneath and through the stowage area here under and in the hole. This is the support for the bracket that goes inside the hole. We're going to place that back up in here and we'll screw the mounting bracket into that, the mast mounting bracket. Okay, here's the mast uh, mounting plate screwed onto the kayak. It went in well. It's got the backing plate and strut support underneath. It deformed the hole just a tad to go down with a tight fit. Even though there might be a little curve to the hole up there, it went down flush. I had to adjust the drill bit size until I got it right, I started small, but I ended up with five and five thirty seconds. So five thirty second bit allows for the threads of the stainless steel screws to bite into the plastic polyester or polypropylene, whatever these things are made of. And uh, so that makes me feel comfortable with having uh, a watertight seal. So now what I have to do is to go in where the strut support is located and cut the actual strut so that uh, the top end of it 
is trimmed back a bit so that it just raises the, the mass plate a little bit. So I'll have to trim this and get this down to size to fit this particular kayak. Okay, I've cut down the compression support strut that goes underneath the mass base plate. As you can see, it took me a little while to get it just right. The strut comes at about 12 inches. I couldn't see too well under there when I was measuring and I thought it was closer to 9, but it turns out it was closer to 8 inches would be the right height. So I took off a few inches to begin with and then played with it and ended up taking, as you can see, those rings there uh, another inch or so off <clears throat> in order to get it to fit. And so this will now fit under into the hole and into the fitting that's under there, the tube. And then I can put it underneath and it raises it just a little bit. You can hardly tell, but it's, it's in there tight now. Nice fit. This might go down a little tighter, but it looks like this rides a little loose in the mast at uh, any rate. So I've taken about an hour and 15 minutes to get this together. And, and that might be a little bit long for some, but uh, I do a lot of measuring and a lot of measuring before I, before I cut so, and before I drill. So we're ready to put in a number of cleats and iPads and get this thing finished up. All right. All right, after a short lunch break, we had some leftover ribs from the, yesterday. And I also had a small glass of longleaf pale ale that came from the Appalachian Mountain Brewery up in Boone, where our daughter lives. So let's see if this goes with a little less stress or goes more efficiently, who knows. But at any rate, I put the template back on so I can measure out the angle, 45 degree angle from the center for placement of the pad eyes that will be for the back stays. So I've drawn a uh, little line on the hole here and I'm going to place this. So what we're doing now is uh, putting in the forestay. And what I want to point out, which may not be clear to everyone, it took me a little while to realize what I needed to do, is that first off, the uh, the forestay is connected to the sail the way it's shipped which is the way it'll be uh, attached in the end. But uh, ultimately, or in, during installation, you simply untie it from the sail. And what I've done is to take that free end and now run it through all the various slots where it's gotta go. So if you follow the diagrams, you see it goes through this hole here in the base of the mast. And then up the mast, and out a hole on the uh, ring uh, that's up there. And then with that uh, ring in place, through the ring, it comes down through the pulley. And as you'll see, I've adjusted the pulley to get it really fairly snug, the block here, right up against the, the nose of the kayak. Then it comes back down through the base of the mast. There's a hole conveniently drilled. So this is all machined very nicely. So that goes through there. And for installation and adjusting the tension, I've got the loop tied, a bowlin that was on the sail. I just put it around the top of the mast. And then I can pull all my line through. and down. And now if you'll look, I imagine that the outhaul on this is best if it's dead center. On the other hand, that runs right across the middle of the hatch. So maybe it'll be okay if it's off to an angle a bit. Now if I put it off to the angle, I might be able to run this four-stay outhaul, downhaul, uphaul line for the mast under my cargo straps. I think that would be cleaner. Then I could put the cleat 
that's used to cinch it down right here above the last cargo eye and maybe that would be a good spot for cinching it down um, that as you can see is just forward of my cockpit cockpit and it would give me a good pull and a good place to cleat it within reach of my right hand on the right side since I'm right-handed if you noticed on the tsunami they've got I think this is for the rudder this is quote rudder ready I don't really have a rudder hopefully I won't need a rudder but this sits here and maybe I can take some of my slack line and work out a system where it just comes back here otherwise I'll just drop it into the cockpit I guess so I'm going to screw in this uh, cleat here and I think there might be one more cleat for the boom for the uh, uh, not the reefing line but the uh, the sail line okay that's it one thing I forgot to mention is that these pad eyes and these cleats take a bit of 330 seconds so 330 seconds and it bites into the the screw bites into the plastic and you get a nice uh, fit with that when putting those in I think I covered all the bits that were needed to mount the sail Here we are on Lake Wheeler with the kayak all loaded up with the Falcon sail. I've got it set up so that the lashings or the sail tie downs are ad hoc, just temporary. See how that works. Uh, we're out here on Lake Wheeler south of Raleigh. Water level's low, but and the light is very and the wind is very light, so that'll be good for giving uh, me uh, an inaugural sale, a good start. And it uh, took eight minutes uh, to, to mount it all up. And I'll get faster at that, I'm sure. Well, we just, I just finished my inaugural ride out on Lake Wheeler. It was very light wind today. But that was good for taking it down and bringing it up and I practiced that uh, several times and everything worked out very fine. The only thing I would suggest that we need to watch out for is this pinches up here at times when the sail twists. Uh, this is the uh, forestay and the uphaul, downhaul and sometimes the mass turns sideways and that'll pinch it right here. But uh, other than that it's a great great 